Today we're going to cover repairing your exterior door. This is a front door that has some rot on the bottom of it. We need a new threshold put into it and we need to take this door and paint it. Change the weather stripping along with that. And I'm going to show you a few tips that you really want to know when you're doing these things. Alright, let's get started. My son David and I are going to take care of a door frame here that has rot on the bottom. We're also going to pull this threshold out because we have a little problem with it. David's going to paint Granny's door. We're going to get it straight. All right, let's get started on it. Here's the rot. We're just going to take and clean this out, and I'm going to fill it back in with some fiberglass, sand it, and straighten it out. As far as this goes, you see how paint gets on on this? This is the weather stripping. Well, this weather stripping comes out real easily, and it's old, so I'm going to replace it. This is about $5 a length for this stuff. You just pull it right out. Once I get all of this out, I can have room to work with this. I'm going to pull the threshold off because it's in bad shape anyway. It's not in there very well. I'm going to unscrew this, pull it out the way, and we'll fix this. If you look right here, you'll see the brick molding is notched around threshold piece. So I'm going to take a razor blade and cut the caulk right here, and then I'm going to pull this brick molding off so I can get this threshold out. Alright, while David's working on the door, I'm going to go ahead and cut this caulk. Get this ready to take out. Run a couple of lines down it, get that caulk cut, cut well, and you can just pull it right off. broken loose what I'm going to do is walk it down I'll take my claw from my hammer or if you have two flat bars you can do that and you'll take it and just move it a little bit that way you can see the nails and you can get close to the nails but you're not prying all of it on one end while this is attached real well it's harder to take off that way if you walk it down it comes off a lot easier so we'll just take this turn your hammer sideways once you put the claw in there, and it comes out. Okay. I got all of these screws loose, but this one screw right here is stripped out, had dirt and everything else in it, and it was partially stripped, so it's not coming out. No big deal. I'm going to take this threshold, pop it out, and then I'll get to it. So, what you want to do after this is loose, you see I can pop it that way. I'll go back and forth until I get this out. It's not going to come in because there's a strip on the bottom of this that's going to hit the flooring on the inside of the house. And this was a pre-hung door, so this threshold was attached to the bottom. You'll have a little nail in the bottom of there, you'll just have to work it out. It's not a big deal. There's my stripped out screw. Don't worry about that. If you don't have an easy out to take it out with, you can drill it. I'm not concerned with this. It's just a wooden strip anyway, but I will fix it. This is a good size hole. So I took a couple of pieces of wood and just stuck them in there to fill that void up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna fill it out to here and it's fiberglass. So there's no sense in me going way back there. I just put a couple of pieces in here to fill this. You can use anything you want for this. If you had to use aluminum foil, you could jam aluminum foil in there just to kind of fill that void up because that fiberglass is going to grab everything else. Like I said, this isn't all that important. It's just a matter of filling in this void. This is a uh, Bondo glass. It's fiberglass mixed with Bondo. There's strands in it. I use this to fill large cavities, and then I'll come back over it with uh, Bondo for real smooth edges. 
uh, just regular Bondo. I love this stuff. Best wood filler is plastic filler, as far as I'm concerned. Here's the hardener, and there's my Bondo glass. So I'm gonna take this and mix it up good. If you have trouble with it sagging a lot, you can wait a couple of seconds or a minute or so, and it'll start to harden up. When it hardens up just a little bit, you can get it in that hole, and it'll stay. Sometimes I use um, drywall tape or something on there, and I've used that on other videos. Anybody who's seen my soffit videos will see how I, I use that. It works great. So, we'll be real careful. American flag, we have to respect it. I don't want to get too close to that. So, if you don't respect the American flag, leave the country. We don't need you. Take something and put on the bottom underneath here just so everything doesn't stick to that. It doesn't matter if I cut this paper off. I don't want to get anything on this too. I'll be real careful. But I'm just going to fill this in. If this goes out past this, I'm fine because I can always shape it. That's easy. All right, this is hardening up quick on me. So let's go ahead and fill it in. It looks bad at first, but it's it's gonna turn out perfect, believe me. I've done it too many times, I know. There's other ways to do this. I could pull that frame out, and that's not hard either, but this is an easy fix for someone who doesn't have a lot of carpentry skills or really doesn't want to get into tearing that out. It starts getting to where you can work it. It's hard, hard enough to stay in place, but I can still cut it. So what I'm doing is I'm trimming this up while it's soft enough to do that. And that way you don't have to sand as much like this. I can clean all of this off of here, get this edge right here, and kind of shape it. Then we'll come back over with another coat once this dries. It'll, it'll dry within a few minutes. Once it starts hardening up, within five minutes, it's dry enough to sand and go back over again. Okay, I'm gonna take my paintbrush and just clean this out a little bit. I'll wipe it down with a little bit of acetone or denatured alcohol to clean it, and then I'm gonna put another pass on it. Make sure you get all that dust out of there. You see that little cavity right there? That's that's the next fill. I'm just going to take it and mix a little bit more in here. That's all she wrote. Fill this gap up. Doesn't look so good when it first goes on there, but once you sand it and smooth it, you can't even tell it was damaged. I'm going to leave it heavy all the way around. Because like I said, I can always trim it. If you make a mistake on this and you go too deep, no big deal. You can take some Bondo, regular Bondo cream, and just put right over it. I'm going to take and hand sand a little bit just to get that gumminess off of it. To where the sand will cut it, the sandpaper will cut it without gumming up. Okay. This is the fiberglass. We cleaned it up, I wiped it down, and now I'm gonna take some Bondo and mix up and just fill this little part right here and smooth it out. This Bondo filler right here is a lot easier to work with than the fiberglass it goes on smoother as you can see doesn't fill holes as well but it really smooths out and I can get a nice nice finish right here you can shape things a little bit better with it because you can move it around it doesn't have the fiberglass in it I'll put a little extra right here
right here we have a groove that we're going to have to bring all the way down to the bottom in order for the weather stripping to tuck in there. And that's not a big deal. When this starts hardening up to where I can work with it or, or shave it, that's, that's the time that I'll go ahead and make that groove. You don't want to do it right now because it's too soft and it's gooey. And you don't want it when it's too hard because then you really have to grind it down there. You just want to be able to cut it out when it's ready. And that's what I'm going to do. It has to be a big enough groove for that trim to fit in. So we wanna, I don't want to mess it up. I just want to kind of work it. It's a little gummy back there, so I'll be careful. I don't want to break that whole piece off. No big deal. I'll just put it back on again if, if that's the case, but I don't want to have to do it twice. Now I'll take the razor blade and I'll just clean up the edge. Cut it and get it a nice little perfect angle. A cut. I want to clean this up here. So what I'm going to do is take my blade and get my extra sandpaper that I was using to sand the other down with. And I put it on here. Now I can clean up this edge. Get a nice straight edge. 